are in the trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics. The Cincinnati Bengals continue prepping for the NFL season. However, this is a start of a different week. It's actually somewhat of a game week preseason. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming up Saturday night, 7 p.m. Dave Lappin was on hand for practice today. And Lapp, this is the things where players start getting excited because they know they're going to see a different uniform by the end of this coming week. But it also kind of gets the dog days. You've now been in pads a few days, and you're starting to feel that, especially when you get Ohio River, August, heat and humidity. No doubt, Dave. It's uh, one of those trial-by-fire days because it was fire out there. I mean, the temperatures were, you know, 90s somewhere, or low 90s, I guess, and very, very high humidity. So it was typical of uh, you're sweating, and the sweat stays on you, and there's nowhere for it to go. So. It's, uh, it's, it is. It's the dog days of summer. It's the dog days of training camp. Um, and, and with that, you're, you have to really fight to, to focus. Uh, you know, as a, as a lineman, as a former lineman, it's like, all right, now I really have to concentrate on my footwork. I don't want that base to be narrow. Keep that wide base so, you know, you can stay in balance. Make, make sure you finish with your hands. Make sure that your footwork and, and, uh, and hand placement is proper. Make sure your pad level is low enough. You know all the all the fundamentals, all the basics. That's when you have to, when you're going through days like this. That's when you have to hone in on on those things and and uh, and make sure you're doing all the all the little things right. You can't neglect them because uh, you can you can get out of sync with that pretty darn quickly if you allow that to happen. And uh, honestly, it's uh, these these are the uh, other other days where guys that really busted it in the off season, guys that busted their tails. It's good to see the guys that busted their tails like that. It's paying off for them because guys like Yossi, uh, you know, guys like Charlie Jones, Chase Brown, those those type of guys that we've talked about um, are, are really starting to show up. They're not only getting their their uh, snap opportunities, they're they're not wearing down. Uh, they're taking they're, they're in tremendous shape. They're in tremendous football shape. Uh, they're taking advantage of those opportunities, no matter you know what the weather's been like. And then. You know, watching a guy like Mims still, I mean, the thing that comes to mind when I watch Mims, if you had to break it down to one word, this dude is rooted, man. He is rooted. It's hard to, it's hard to move this guy when he, when he, uh, when he has, when he's in position with his, with his knees bent with that big old strong body that he's got. And Trent Brown was cleared today to practice, but he didn't, he didn't practice. I think they're going to ramp him up slowly. I think uh, at some point in time here, Maybe prior to this game week, you're going to see him doing some individual drills and things like that. But there's no way that he's going to be a participant in the football game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And and that's the thing, uh, Dave. It's uh, it's it's pretty interesting because uh, they're thin in a, in a few spots. I mean, it, it, on the edge um, in, and inside too. Cam Sample he didn't go again today, and that his injury sounds to be serious. So I hope uh, the way he was carted off in a boot. On a cart like that, I mean, you know, you start thinking bad things, and the worst thing is an Achilles, and hopefully it's not anything like that, but you wonder about it. Uh, Tufele didn't go today uh, with his ankle issue. Rankin's, uh, I don't know if it was a vet day, or if he's got he's dinged up a little bit. And then, of course, you know, Trey Hendrickson, um, Sam Hubbard, those guys haven't been going. Gunter was going during during the day and then had to, had to – uh, uh, take take uh, the end of practice off, get ice on that knee. So I mean, there's a lot of guys nursing things up front in the in the defensive line. I'm thinking, man, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the edge, what are we going to have? You're going to have Miles Murphy and Joseph Asai, and then a bunch of young bucks, man. I mean, the troops are going to be pretty thin. I think you're going to see a lot of young players play a ton of snaps against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that was going to be the case anyway. But particularly now with uh, you know with with these guys. Uh, being nicked up, it's definitely going to be the case. Um, and then, you know, a guy that I want to put into the into the equation, probably first and foremost, who worked his tail off in the offseason to get ready uh, and, is, and is taking advantage of it, is Joe Burrow. I mean, every guy in the team will tell you that Joe Burrow is as hard a worker as anybody on the football team. He takes nothing for granted, and, uh, and he, he was effective once again today. They had, you know, a couple of periods during the uh, practice, Dave, where it was – um, you know, everything was unscripted, it was move the ball, unscripted plays. And, and uh, Joe hooked up once again with Charlie Jones. Uh, Charlie made a great contested catch with over Lance Robinson. And 
Uh, it was excellent coverage by Robinson. He just didn't finish the play with his hands well enough, but Charlie made a big play for Joe that, you know, was, was part of a, um, a touchdown uh, that they, they eventually accumulated on that, uh, on that drive. Um, so, you know, it was, it was good to see that. Um, when the second group got in there with, with Browning, he started doing a lot of screens and went to, he was, he screened to his running back, screened to his tight end, all made a couple of plays. He screened to his wide receivers. Um, so, you know, it was interesting to see the, the difference in, uh, in the plays that were, that were running uh, their, their screen game and their quick game um, showed, uh, showed up pretty well today. Joe, Joe Burrow did get sacked on the, on the second team period. Um, but uh, he was, he was sharp when he did throw the football, he hit T a couple of times and, uh, it, it's interesting when you uh, when he gets out of pocket, when Brownie gets out of pocket, how the the back end is is really doing a pretty good job of plastering. And I'm I'm saying these wide receivers are taking advantage of reps and taking advantage of their opportunity, but I'm not about to tell you that you know they're um, they're going to supplant Jamar Chase or T Higgins. <laughs> I'm not going to sit tell you that those two are still you know extraordinary players, and uh, anybody in the National Football League would love to have those guys on their roster and. T. Higgins has had a good camp, very strong camp. He made a couple of plays today. You know, obviously, uh, Jamar has not has not participated at all. Um, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see who plays, how much they play against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as, as uh, this game approaches. And then now you have to start thinking about, uh, you know, the personnel department has to start thinking about, all right, I got to get down to 69 uh, with practice squad. There's that, then there's the the play. They're thinking about the 69 man roster and the 53 man roster. That's what the personnel people are thinking about. The players and coaches are thinking about the 53 man roster and the 48 man roster because that's game day. You know they're going to sit uh, sit players. Uh, they're going to be deactivated on game day, but the 69 players in, include 16 practice squad players. So yeah, that's you know there are 90 guys in camp, so it's competitive. I mean there's going to be 21 guys go. And, and more than 21, you, you bring guys back off of the waiver wire for your practice squad. So now it becomes, you know, every single snap even is under more of a microscope. And, you know, particularly as you get ready to play in preseason games and then play in those preseason games, all of that tape goes around the National Football League. There's no, um, you know, there's nothing to hide there. It's, it's out there for everybody to see. And you want to perform well when you get that opportunity, when you get out there as a young player those preseason games, those snaps are the most important snaps of your football life. There's no doubt about it, Dave. Zach Taylor is going to be asked this question probably as many times as he gets interviewed over the next several days. Will Joe Burrow take snaps against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or will even take snaps in the preseason at all? Yeah, and, and when Joe has been asked that, you know, at a, at a presser, and, and he said that uh, you know, he wants to. I mean, if, if, if it's a discussion where, um, you know, Zach and, and the coaching staff offensively is making a making a decision, I think, you know, Joe's, Joe's uh, input is going to be important in that decision-making process. They certainly haven't decided how much, how many, but I do think, you know, Joe, uh, Joe wants to take snaps. Uh, you know, he said, uh, you know, I, I might get hit. Maybe I won't. You know, that, that's all part of it. So, I, you know, I'm not sure if it'll be – Go out there for for one series, hand the ball off three times. If you don't generate the first down, you're done. You're off the football field, and that's it for the night. And you you know you don't really get much out of that. But what you do get out of it is during the course of the week, you know, taking snaps, getting ready to be uh, compete in that preseason game, uh, and then you know go through the whole ritual of the preseason game, preparing you know going out there like you are going to be on the football field to play in it, and then on game day. Uh, go, you know, everything, get ready for uh, the regular season game with your individual uh, routine, your protocols in terms of getting ready for the game, whatever they may be, the amount of sleep you get, what you eat, um, you know, the, the, the uh, night before the, uh, the game meetings, and then on game day, what time do you get to the stadium? Uh, how, how early do you want to go out to warm up? Do you want to go out earlier than than people is that's what you do during the regular season. That's what you're going to want to start to do right away. So, you know, you can still go through all that, even if you don't take snaps, but if you're taking snaps, you're approaching it maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit different from a mental standpoint. So there's, there's a lot to be gained by that. Uh, taking, taking snaps and getting ready to take those snaps in the preseason game, because that's what you're going to be doing right up until game time, getting ready to play in that, uh, take that first snap 
you know, against the New England Patriots when the, when the, the marbles are, are all on the table, the game's on the line. You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics. If you're looking for a new career, make sure to check out FirstStarLogistics.com for details on openings at one of the best companies, fastest growing companies in the Cincinnati area. As they say, opportunity knocking, just like in training camp for football players across the country, looking to make rosters of NFL teams. Lap, you know, we talk about the big names, and you've been talking a lot about the guys who maybe don't get as much attention. Young players, we've spoke about this before. The importance of training camp, as you said, determines your NFL longevity, your career. Um, having just been this weekend, Hall of Fame induction weekend, sometimes those guys that are not talked about much end up with a Hall of Fame career. Yeah, there's there's no question. I mean, there have been there have been guys that uh, weren't drafted into the National Football League out of college that uh, had Hall of Fame careers. There, back when there were 17 rounds, there were guys that were drafted in the 15th round or later that had Hall of Fame careers. Now, you know, few and far between. I'm not going to say that it, it's it's definitely uh, an exception to the rule, but the fact is, it happens, and it gives you uh, it, it gives you some juice. You know, I mean, it's like, okay, if guys that were that were uh, not, not highly thought of or uh, for some reason were, were overlooked, man, you know, chip on the shoulder. I'm going to prove people wrong and prove them wrong all the way to the Hall of Fame. I mean, you can't, you can't do any better than that. But, yeah, I mean, guys are just – right now it's an it, it's, it's uber-competitive environment. I mean, guys are, are definitely doing everything they possibly can to extend their careers for as many snaps as they possibly can. And uh, so, you know, the other, the other thing when I think about it, Dave, that um, uh, Frank Pollock – uh, was was absent for a good good part of practice today, but he has been in his office and he has been uh, do, doing some things uh, from a uh, you know a mental standpoint and arranging things. But he hasn't just been out there on the football field. I don't know if he's having some sort of a procedure, um, you know, on on his on his lower body or what the case may be that might prevent him from standing on his feet all that time or whatever. I, I don't I don't know, but I don't think it's anything uh, uber serious. Nobody seems to be uh, very, very uh, overly concerned with the fact that, uh, you know, that Frank's not out on the practice field. He's doing just about everything, everything else that uh, actually not just about he's doing everything else that needs to be done as uh, as an offensive line coach. And like we said before, Derek Frazier uh, still doing a, an outstanding job out there on the football field as the assistant offensive line coach. Lap, one of the questions going into camp was, yeah, there might be a little bit of a battle at punter, but everyone expected, you know, eh, we drafted a guy a year ago. Three guys still in camp right now. Do you see that continuing all the way to the, the Tampa Bay game, or do you think there'll be a change on the roster at that position before the game, or will we see all three guys get an opportunity come next Saturday? Yeah, I don't think Darren has made a, a, a complete decision on that yet. You know, I think uh... – I think that if, if in fact he, he sees uh, through the competition and they are competing, I mean, they'll go on to the, onto a separate field on their own while everybody else is, is working on whatever they're working on the other, you know, 88 players and, and they're out there, 87 players and they're out there, you know, uh, directional kicking, um, you know, pooch punting, doing uh, booming the thing as, as a, uh, as, as long as they possibly can. So, I mean, they're, they're all being tested and in, in doing different things, different drops uh, to the, to the, from their hand to their foot in terms of hunting that Darren wants to try. I mean, they're doing all that kind of stuff. So that competition is ongoing. And um, as soon as somebody or two of them separate the, se- separate themselves, I think, I think Robbins is, is, you know, going to be competed against for, with one of these other two guys. So as soon as Darren feels like, all right, well, I've made a decision and, 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 you know, it, it might be a, a case where, Oh boy, you know, today yeah, one, one really kind of separate himself. And then the next thing, you know what, he's not as big a separation today. I'm going to have to maybe give it another day. There, there's no, there's no great rush. So as long as they're all competing at a, at a very high level, you know, he might want to reward them with, okay, at least in preseason game number one, you know, Robin, you're going to be around, you know, longer. I do know that. So why don't we split the uh, punting duties in, in game one or, you know, maybe involve all three of you in game one somehow or whatever the case may be. I think uh, I think Darren's going to be deciding that uh, here sooner rather than later that, 
Uh, it's it's going to be dictated by how they how they perform on a day in and day out basis, no doubt. Yeah, Dave. One more quick thought about the uh, the three punters in terms of how uh, will they be available for the Tampa Bay game, and if so, how do they handle that? Well, you know, if they're all available, I think the best thing you do is, you know, to divide it up by quarter. You may not punt in that quarter, so I think you just got to rotate all three guys. Everybody gets a punt, and honestly. All three may not get an opportunity to punt the football. You never know what's going to happen in the preseason. You don't know how many punts you're going to get. I mean, you hope you don't get a whole ton of them. But, you know, if you get three, probably the, the best thing to do if you're still trying to make an evaluation on on uh, the three or the two that are going to be competing with Brad Robbins is let all three punters punt and and see what happens. You know, live bullets. And everybody gets uh, their turn, and, uh, and, and so be it. And pr- try to put your best foot forward. Be sure to stay within the trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics throughout the Bengals training camp and then into the season. Bring your reports, interviews. Uh, I know we have a, a big interview coming up that we'll be releasing later this week that you'll want to definitely see one of the young wide receivers. So make sure, hit that subscribe button, like the videos as you go to them, comment. We love comments. We love seeing the what you have to say about the video, the interview we do. Uh, or whatever comments you may have about the Cincinnati Bengals football team. Until next time, this is Dave Burke for Dave Lapham. You have been in the trenches, presented by First Star Logistics. Who day? Who day, Dave? Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self motivation leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.